<clears throat> Once you're over 40, you got to wear these glasses sometimes, they say. <clears throat> it's good to see everybody here. A lot of good friends and a lot of old friends. And <clears throat> just want to talk about Jim Harmon a little bit. And he's my great-great-grandfather. There's a lot of history that goes back with this. And <clears throat> Jim Loman's going to talk about a special little part of that. And we're going to try to cut the minutes down a little bit. But... So Jim was born in 1856 in Washington County, Iowa, and he come across on a boat and hitchhiked on a team of oxen and ended up in western North Dakota before it was even a state. <clears throat> he worked for the HT Ranch, and which they were a big remount for Calvary. And, you know, back then everything was done with horses, and you know Rex Cook was talking one time he said you know all of the all this country was big on horses and you got to think about Chicago had a hundred thousand head of horses and New York City had a hundred and fifty thousand head of horses in New York City and <clears throat> there'd be people from, from come over from France and Czechoslovakia and they'd catch the rail out here to the Dakotas and buy horses and, and not just a few I mean lots and lots of horses well Jim, he was working for the HT Ranch, and there was another guy by the name of Norman Lebo that was there, and Skyler Lebo, and Norman happened to have a daughter, and Jim married Lulu Harmon, or Lulu Lebo, and, <clears throat> and so they had a bunch of kids, like 11 kids, and, and it, we always say it takes a community to, to raise kids, and so they had a bunch of kids around there, and they... In the early 1900s, they bought a little piece of land in Billings County and, and uh, started a homestead there. Well, the taxes on that piece of land was $6. Can you imagine that today? That's all the taxes were, 6 bucks. <clears throat> so anyway, they had 11 kids and one of the oldest daughters passed away and so Jim thought it would be good to start a cemetery. So he started a cemetery there, and it's called the Harmon Tetley Cemetery. It's where we go every, every year at Memorial Days. We go there and trim up the bushes and mow the grass and pay our respects. And my brother's buried there and my grandpa and on down the list. But <clears throat> So there was a bunch of them Harmon boys and we always figure, well, which one of them was the best cowboy? Well, the jury's still out yet. We don't know. Louis Pelliser said it was Roy. Then there was other ones that said it was Bob, and other ones said it was Bert. And Jim, you know, he raised all those kids. And <clears throat> I don't remember what the first year the rodeo was held in, in Medora. There's pictures back in 1910. There's pictures all over the place and they, they had three different sets of rodeo grounds. So to try to pick out where the original rodeo grounds in Medora is, you have to do a little study and it can be at the Rancherama or it can be at the, the old zoo, the amphitheater, or it can be at the old stockyards. But it was, there wasn't people from Washington and Texas coming up to the rodeo in Medora, it was all just the neighbor the neighbor kids and stuff and they rode bucking horses and bulls and anything just for entertainment well the, the Harmon boys were all part of that and, and Bert later went up Bert was a, a son of Jim's and he later married a Tetley daughter and, and then he was stationed in South St. Paul as a brand inspector back when there was we didn't have sail barns that everything had to go by rail to St. Paul, and anyway, that's that was part of the kids that went on, and it was Jim that helped instill all the good things with those kids. He later became the guided for Theodore Roosevelt and cooked for him, and all the fun things that happened with that. But I'm going to let Jim tell a quick story about some of this. Uh, Jim Loman, uh, I guess I'm nominated to Harmon family for the Hall of Fame. Um, as um, Tyler said, a number of these boys that Jim and Lulu raised would all deserve to uh, enter the Cowboy Hall of Fame on their own merit. So the question was, 
who was the best, and uh, the old timers remembered him had different opinion. Roy, Earl, Bert, or not. So uh, we come come up with the idea. Let's just put them in as a ranch. Get all of them done with one one going. That's the thought behind it. And uh, like you mentioned, some said Roy was probably the best hand. Uh, I would mention that Earl, another brother, uh, toured with the Badlands of Bill McCarty Wild West show around this country and into Canada. And when he performed, he was called the Wampus Cat, but he was top bronc rider and roper. And then uh, Tyler's great grandpa, Bert, won a trophy saddle at the Miles City Roundup in, I think it was 1913, because that roundup was started in 1912, and that was the forerunner of the Miles City Bucking Horse Auction, which you're all familiar with. In 48, it got changed over. But he won that trophy saddle there. And it was uh, interesting. Uh, oh, slick fork saddle, a pretty saddle, and had the high can like they rode in those days. And the, the uh, saddle maker carved, carved uh, embroidered, uh, engraved his initials on the back of that can, H, 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 Hubert Henry Harmon. And that's in the hands of Tyler's mother and dad today. But that saddle uh, never hung up in, uh, as a trophy. Um, uh, Bert rode it, and I think he gave it to his son Harmon. He used it, and it went down to Harmon's son, that'd be your grandson, and he wasn't quite into the cowboy trade, so it either got sold or given away, and had a couple of three owners until my dad happened to come across it. And dad had kind of followed up and rode it a little bit, and he knew the Harmon boys when they were kind of stepping out, and he got to be a historian, he sees that saddle was Harmon's trophy saddle. He says, that needs to go back in the family where it comes from. So he got hold of me and gave it to me, and I was able to get it to them, so just to... They could all enter in on their own merit, but it'd be kind of nice to put them all in together, I think. And so a lot of other stories we could tell, but uh, they sure are worthy of being in there, so thank you.